which is about a groundbreaking new vaccine for melanoma skin cancer, which is being trialled in the UK. Yes, the personalised jab contains the same technology that was used in some COVID-19 vaccines. It identifies proteins in the cancer cells so they can be destroyed by the patient's own immune system. Now, early studies have shown that used in con conjunction with another cancer drug, it almost halves the risk of recurrence or death after three years. Now, melanoma is the most serious form of skin cancer and can spread to other areas of the body. The main cause of melanoma is ultraviolet light, which comes from the sun, is used in sunbeds. Around 17,500 people are diagnosed with melanoma each year in the UK. It's the UK's fifth most common cancer. However, experts say 86% of these cases could be prevented simply by taking the right precautions. Well, I'm very pleased to say Professor Paul Lorigan, who's overseeing the trial at Christie in Manchester, is with us on the surface this morning. morning. Very good morning to you. Thank you. you. Um, take us through some basics, if you would. What, what is happening right now in terms of the trial? So the trial, it's a trial of this new melanoma vaccine, which is um, based on the COVID um, technology that we developed a few years ago. And it's been evaluated in melanoma, the most serious form of skin cancer. It's for people who've had the melanoma removed, but we know they're at high risk of the cancer coming back. And for those patients, if they go into the trial, we use the tumour that we've removed to make a personalised vaccine for those patients. And they have the standard treatment that they normally would to boost the immune system. But in addition, we give them the vaccine to hopefully increase the efficacy of the immunotherapy. So right now, you are screening people to take, to take part in the trial? That's correct. And by screening, I mean, you know, these, patients, these people are having surgery for the melanoma. We've identified that they're at high risk of recurrence. They're going to be having treatment and then we're offering them the opportunity to be part of the trial. And if they agree and they're suitable, um, we send the tumour off and then that gets evaluated. It goes through a QA process to ensure that we can actually make the vaccine. What's a QA process? Quality assurance. Right. So, so it's got to be a high quality tumour? It has to be a tumour that you can make a vaccine from. So, yes, it needs to be pure. And then there are, it's a very complex technical process. From the patient's point of view, and from our point of view as clinicians, it's straightforward. But in the back room, the actual manufacturer making the vaccine is very complicated. It takes two or three months to do it. OK, well, that brings me on to cost. How expensive is this? The technology... I mean, you said the technology is already established because it's what was used for the COVID vaccine. So those kind of technical bits are there. But to develop this particular personalised vaccine, two to three months... Yes, so... Per person. As you say, so the technology is there from the COVID um, era and from developing the vaccines. But this is different in that, you know, COVID, it was the same vaccine for everybody. This is a vaccine that's built for the individual... Um, and so the tumour is broken down. We identify the targets, or the company identify the targets in the tumour that the immune system is likely to uh, respond to. There's an algorithm, so they make a choice of what the best targets are going to be. And that process is, you know, take, is very... Are humans doing that, or is, is a machine doing that? It's a, it'll be a mix of scientists and machine. I mean, most, you know, a lot of what we do laboratory tests, if you go to have your blood test done, that's done by a machine. So a lot of this is, you know, is done by machines, but overseen by humans. So these, this is a testing process. Yes. And I know you, I'm sure you'll be cautious about what next. Yeah. Can I give you the what if question? If the results come back as you hope they will, that it works, what's the potential for this? So it's potentially transformative, really, um, to uh, significantly improve outcomes. And, that, and by that, I mean reduce rates of recurrence of cancer, mean more people live without cancer, um, both in melanoma, which you explained uh, is uh, one of the less common cancers in the UK. It's the fifth or sixth more, less, uh, most common. But also in more common cancers, like lung cancer, colorectal cancer. So it's not a technology that's just for skin cancer, Potentially, it can be used across a huge number of cancers. And that's what we're very excited about. So, just to go back, how much... Is it going to be expensive? 
So we don't know uh, what the cost will be, but when we talk about you know, expense, we also need to talk about efficacy. And you know, effective treatments can then be very cost effective, even if they're expensive. Well, because they're halving the recurrence within exactly. three years. It's exactly. Predicted. So when will we see it? We'll, we'll get an early re readout in the study. We, I mean, we've already had one small study with 150 patients, and that showed a very strong signal. That's what we're so excited about. And so this is the definitive study that will prove yes or no, and that will take a few years. Oh. So in terms of patients, uh, you know, there'll be people literally listening to yeah. you now thinking, I know someone, it could be me in the future. Uh, that timeline thing, there, there is a gap now for all the right reasons yeah. before anything could happen, even if you get the results you're hoping for. With this vaccine, that is the case. It, it won't be available tomorrow because we need to um, treat people, they... Um, and see how they are, follow them up over a period of time. And that does take a couple of years. When you... When it's done and it's yeah. on... And you're already testing now. So when you take the vaccine, how many times do you have to take it? Like, how does it... You know, like... So, for it's, example, with COVID, we, you know, it could be numerous, or with measles, you take two, or, you know... What, what is it with this cancer one? Yeah, so it's given in the same way if you're having your flu vaccine or your COVID vaccine. It's an intramuscular injection. We give it... Uh, with the treatment, and it's given over a period of a year. So it's about nine vaccinations. And then... And, then, and that's it. And that's the beauty of vaccines. So, as we know, you know, uh, they protect us... You know, as children, we had our childhood vaccinations against infection. They protect you for a long time. So it can build in long-term so protection. So th this is the stupid question. You know, like, when you have a vaccine and sometimes you think you feel a bit ill yeah. from it, do you feel... <laughs> what, what of the patients you've screened, do they feel that their immune system is working? You know, like, you can sometimes get a cold or you can feel a bit worn yeah, out. So, one of the beauties with this vaccine, and we are learning as we go along, but is that the side effects with it side, are low. So, people do feel a bit similar symptoms. Most We've all had COVID vaccines. We know, you know, you can feel a little bit of flu-like symptoms, a little bit uh, off for maybe a day or two, a bit of fatigue. But in terms of the side effects, Relatively, they're very low. The risks are very low. The benefits, potentially, are, are huge. Uh, Professor, thank you so much for explaining this for us. And I'm sure we will speak again as and when you get more results through. And good luck to you and your team at the Christie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.